Hey everyone, welcome to the channel. Today we're going to be finishing this tabletop that we glued up and we'll be putting it on this base that we created previously. You probably wandered in here because my clickbait title and you thought to yourself, there is no way this clown sold this table for $10,000. And you're right, I am still a hobbyist woodworker and like most of you, I grossly underpriced my work and this table is absolutely no different. The point that I want to make here though is that there's so many countless hours that goes into specifically the detail work finishing these tables and that's what I hope to illustrate with this video if you'll watch along with me. So this tabletop is already glued together and flattened and sanded to 60 grit so now I'm just kind of prepping it for epoxy. I'm using the standard Tyvek tape and nothing special here. Um, I'm going to flip it back over and put down some caulk and all this is doing is basically building a dam around the area that I want to protect and keep the epoxy from running out but it also as you pour this epoxy it kind of runs into the holes and, and soaks in so by building the dam it kind of adds a little reservoir there so you don't have to constantly be filling the holes as you go um, and it kind of works but not perfect. A couple things I probably could have done differently uh, this is a two to one epoxy and it takes four ever for it to cure and that's just simply a function of what I had on hand. Uh, a one-to-one -one epoxy would be better for a lot of reasons. Uh, number one, it cures much faster and it's a little bit easier to work with and um, it it doesn't run out everywhere as, as easy. So maybe uh, a side, you know, a little note for yourself there if you're ever getting into this um, for not filling, the one-to-one -one is better. Um, if you're making the river tables that are wildly popular right now, that's probably where you want to use a two-to-one. So after a few days, the epoxy is cured and now it is time to sand all of it down. So I've got to pry all of this stupid caulk loose and to do that, I'm going to use a chisel <clears throat> and just kind of work your way around it and pry it all up. The next thing, um, and something that I've found that helps me out, is uh, applying a little bit of heat to the cured epoxy. And then you can take your chisel and kind of run it underneath. The alternative is sanding it, and that's going to take you literal hours to get through all of that. So, um, like I said, just apply a little bit of heat, run a chisel under it, and you can peel the stuff up pretty quickly. And then you're just left with a little bit of sanding, and you can move on to the next spot pretty easily. So this is the first point that I want to make about the elapsed time. You've probably noticed by now, if you're an astute watcher, that my shirt's changed several times, and it's not because I'm a Howie Mandel germaphobe. It's because it has been day after day after day. I've probably made three or four separate epoxy pours and had to wait for it to cure before I could come in and rework it again. So just the epoxy work alone probably added a good week to this project, if not more. So after three rounds of sanding, you get everything down flat, you think you're done, but then you start looking real close and then you notice that there's little bitty pinholes here and there. And they're probably full of dust already, but if not, um, you can fill those in. But if they are full of dust, you gotta get a little pick and pick all the dust out. And it's just a tedious, tedious process, as you see here. Have you, what do you know about epoxy? Have you worked with it before? Mm. Yep. So much fun. So literally after about a week and a half, I finally finished all the epoxy stuff and man, not a moment too soon. Uh, but I was kind of putting it off because the next step was putting in these support brackets, which admittedly I had never done before. So um, I find that I kind of waste time as much as I can before I force myself to go and do it. So here I'm just using a little quarter inch uh, straight bit on my trim router and dragging it along a straight edge um, inside the mark that I had made. And this just didn't go well. The trim router is just small and underpowered, so I immediately had to switch to my larger router, and that got the job done. But it still is a tedious process because you can only, you know, lower the router about a quarter inch at a time, and it just, 
takes time and time and time. So you'll see here after many multiple passes, I finally get down deep enough on the first leg and so I have to switch over to the next one. So now that all that's done, it's time to add in the threaded inserts. And this is something that always gives me dread because these stupid little things always break on me and I'll show you more about that soon. These here are tapered and it's hard to drill a tapered hole because there's no such thing as a tapered drill, well, there is a tapered drill bit, but anyways, it's hard to drill a tapered hole. And the reason why they're so hard to use is because you gotta put some torque on them and drill them in. But look how little metal there is up here around the top and it's cheap metal on top of that. So the tops break very easily. A wallered out hole. Started. Oh, don't break. Oh, it's starting to break. Oh, look at that. Damn it. So, order these. Uh, well, I say order these, I haven't used them yet. But these are straight. Um, they don't have as aggressive of a fin on them and there's a lot more meat up here on top. You can actually crank on these. So let's see how they do. Needless to say, they did so much better, um, especially because I was able to use my impact dryer on them. So, uh, Huge win there. Keep an eye out if you're ever buying threaded inserts. So um, this time I've sprung for some fancy furniture screws here. So we're, that's what we're gonna be using to secure this support to the back of the table. Repeat it on the other side. I'll spare you the drama of watching that, but it was much the same as this one. So now I need a way to secure these X style legs to the bottom of the tabletop. And so what I'm going to do is take some pecan that I have here and make a mount, I guess, for lack of a better term. So they will screw into the top of the legs and also screw into the bottom of the table. It's a pretty basic process here. I'm just milling everything flat and square and using my jointer and I will then flip over to uh, my flattening table, which if you're new to the channel, this is something that I've made. Um, it's there behind me as I'm using the table saw. It's it's a homemade table thing. Uh, it's got a, a wind router on it um, and a slab slayer flattening bit, and it works very well. Um, my next big project is going to be widen, widening this thing so it works a little bit better. But uh, the gist of it is the the planer, sorry, the router rides over the top of the wood, gives it a nice flat surface, and then you can stick it in your planer and finish surfacing both sides of your project. So now that that's done, I'm marking the center of the legs here so I can drill a hole. And I will then install a threaded insert into each of the four legs from there. So this is where I always get a little bit nervous. I measured the distance between the centers of the tops of the legs and I'm transferring that measurement to these little pieces that I've just milled. So, you know, the nervousness here is my measurements never seem to line up and I'll drill the holes and they should theoretically line up, but they're always some degree off. Fortunately here, I did a pretty good job laying everything out and I really didn't have to go in there and make any secret um, hidden footage that I don't show <laughs> to make it all work right. So all good here.
And there you go. There's the center of one, and I marked it out pretty good. I'm pretty proud of myself for that. And center two. So now I'll take a drill bit and transfer that center and drill it out and install the threaded insert. So basically now I'm repeating the same process. Um, I'm gonna drill holes on the underside going up to allow me to install hardware in the tabletop and that will effectively secure the base to the top and make it all one, one piece. I'll spare you all the gory details of all of that work, or I could just say I lost the footage, one of the two, but um, here it is. It is all put together now in one piece, and at this point, construction is effectively complete, and um, I'm pretty proud of it. There's a couple things I wish I could change, uh, but you know, what can you do at this point? So, uh, on to finishing. For finish, I'm using Rubio Monaco. Uh, I'm pretty happy with this as a product. I, I like how easy it goes on, and I like how easy it is to fix something if something goes wrong. You can lightly sand it and reapply it pretty easily, so um, highly recommend it. I, I will say the one turnoff is kind of the price point, but um, you know, nothing's cheap anymore, so what can I say? All right, so on the top, there's still a little bit of holes, um, as I mentioned earlier. And so what I'm using here is some Starbond adhesive with a little crack filler nozzle and just filling it in and spraying it with the um, instant activator. And it, it does a really good job of filling all the holes. Back on the subject of time, you've probably noticed yet again that I've probably gone through another dozen shirts, and it is because this process takes actual days. And, you know, everything's filmed in time lapse, so it's hard to lose track of, or it's easy to lose track of all the hours taken, but this stuff is just mind numbingly tedious. So, um, a lot of times I'll just put on my headphones and jam some music out until my wife calls and yells at me to come pay attention to her. So, um, that's kind of what I use as an alarm clock in this situation. But anyways, uh, this is just kind of the, the slow and tedious process of me filling in all the holes on the edge and trying to make it look like a finished product. You can see I'm going back here with the Rubio Monocoat on the top and then I am assembling the base here. It just slides together with a couple little walnut clips like that. And this is just the test fit, but here's the finished product and I am about as pleased as I can get with it. As I mentioned, there's a few things that I'm not happy with, but I gave it my best effort and this is what I came up with. Hopefully the clients are as happy with it as I am. Did they spend $10,000? Nope. but. Hopefully it looks like they did, and that's all.